I'm a different guy. I'm really not a sad guy. I, would dare, I wouldn't dare be sad for a Rayfield Riley or Dexter Wright. Or, I couldn't be sad for him. You know, hey, this world is not the place to be. And I'm saying if you can't celebrate people, you know, what did they mean to you? You know, they, they wasn't a sad. Mr. Riley, when, when the last time I seen him, right over there, at Sunday school, he always hug, we always hug and, and get down. He really took me in like, like, his, like his son, because me and his son grew up together, went to school together, and, and so I'm Philip and he's Philip. So in school we used to get in trouble, but it would be blamed on him because he was a little rougher than I'd blame it on him. I'm just gonna tell the truth. <laughs> but uh, but uh, and and Mr. Riley knew, you know, he he, he knew, and uh, and so he he took me in and uh, just like his son, my birthday. He would always know when my birthday was. Next week you got a birthday coming up. You you get. I don't even be thinking. I said, wow. <laughs> and I always got a gift, a card, or something for me. You know what I'm saying? And, and so I'm just saying, even my nephew, when he committed suicide, man, I was glad. He was living in hell. He was living in pure hell. And, you, and I'm not thrilled about looking at people that's not happy. You happy to see them, but they're not happy looking at you. You know what I'm saying? And, and so when, when God made that decision and that choice, man, that's God. You know, and, and, and I, think, I think if we believe the word and what we say, we need to live that. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried about older folk. I'm glad to see you every day. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about our young folk. Just getting no guidance. You know, I'm worried about them. I always had a love for young people. And it never left, but boy, when I see today, you know, I can go over my, my daughter's house and see her kids. No guidance. They do what they want to do. They can eat what they want to eat. They can, when they get home from school, they take their clothes off. They in their boxes. Man, what are y'all doing? You know, <laughs> she make them quit everything. They start a sport. She don't like the coach or, or whatever. Make them quit. She don't realize what she's doing to them. You know, because cause what, what the thing is, you can only feed that monster so long. Because you don't have the money to feed the habit that they're going to have. They have it going to grow. So right now, you can afford to buy them them kid things and do the things they want. Once they mind grow, once they want need grow, you will be able to have it. And they will have no respect for you. You think just because the sign mama means something. No, no. So, so I remind her, and I remind her not for her to change. I just remind her to say, you can't say you didn't know. You can't say you didn't know, because this is going to happen. I already see I already see the attitude. I already see how they address it. I already see how they talk to it. You know, I, I, I watch and see when she tells them to do something, and they keep on doing what they're doing, don't even. Yeah. I see it already. She have not even begun to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I said, boy, they're going to keep growing and, and keep going and, and, and you ain't going to want to deal with it. Yeah. And you never dealt with them. So don't think once they get older that you're going to be able to snatch them back. See, I know rules change, but you got to be able to tell a kid, sit down. Sit right there. Don't move. I got to get you to start listening. Seeing you got to teach them. That ain't nothing just somebody just coming to work pop, following directions and rules. That ain't just something that happened. You got to teach that. You, you listen to people if you want. Don't teach your kid. Don't, you ain't got to do all that shit. <laughs> shit. You listen to that if you want. I know things change. I'm still, I'm still for the whoopings. I'm still for all that. I'm still for the group. Give me 20 push-ups. I'm, I'm still for all that. I, I don't have no... I don't have... I don't see no good in allowing somebody to be disrespectful, Amen. doing what they want to do, and you don't even try to change their direction. 
Our kids is hurt. Right? And, and, and understand something. I don't have to wait to see you when you get, get up here. I see it right now. I see it right now. And what we do, we turn our back. We turn our back. We turn our back. We see it right now. I said, boy, he going to be a fool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 talking about, I'm, I'm talking about you can see that his, his, his mother's not going to even want nothing to do with him. You know, you see it. Yeah. And then when they grow, grow up and it happens, you're like, wow. You know, you, you see it. But I'm saying, I'm saying things, not that, I don't think anything have to change back to a way it was. You know what I'm saying? Things don't have to change back to a way it was. But change, things do need to change. Things do need to change. You need to know why is, why is church so important? And then one, one reason why they'll see it's not important because it's not important to you. Because of the reason you might be going. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they watch you and they say, man, I don't, you know, I know I watch my mom. My mom didn't have nothing. My mom never went on a trip, never bought herself a new clothes, never bought herself a pair of earrings or watch, nothing. She did everything for her kids and got nothing for her. Nothing. I, I didn't think more of my mom because she done that. Really, I was mad at my mom because she cleaned white people's house. I was mad. What Red be talking about saying, you know, I was mad. When I, see, when I actually went to pick my mom up one time from, from work, because she rode the bus all the time, I went to pick her up and she was on her knees. She went, so what you doing? What are you doing? I was mad. I went to school and tore up everything. Just because my mom was working, trying to take care of her kids, her family. I had no respect at all for what she was doing. Yeah. No respect at all. Even though she was feeding me, bringing the tech, I'm saying, she didn't do nothing. She didn't do nothing for herself. It was all for you, all for y'all. You know? And then you grow up just being a selfish, greedy kid. You know? And so that's why I can see them so well. Yeah. That's why I could see them so well. But you know, uh, I, I think. I just think that if you, you believe in the word, and I, I like living in the spirit, not so much in the world. So things that used to could make me mad or piss me off doesn't happen when you're in the spirit. When you go to work and wife or whatever, do it doesn't piss you off when you're in the spirit. But when you're in that worldly old, old mad cause, man, you're mad because you got to go to work. <laughs> and this is what take care of This is what helps take care of you. You're mad. And that's what the world will do to you. That's what that old world. But when the spirit is on, man, you're happy about everything. You have, you, ain't nothing that can, that can move you when you got the spirit of God on you. Nothing. Nothing can move. Nothing can mess your day up if you got the Holy Spirit in your day. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. And God got it there for you. He said, you just choose not to use it. It's right there. If you're right there, you know, you can feel the Spirit when, you get, when the Spirit, Holy Spirit get on you. You can feel it. You can feel it all day long and every day. When you see something you don't like, move. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you see something you don't like, move. When you have some talking going on, you know, move. You know, you got to move. But, it, you know, just, and just thinking, you know, in, 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 in Galatians, uh, in the, just six verse, it said, let him who is taught the word share it, share it in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is, uh, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of, you know, the Spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary while we're doing it. So if you believe that, 
And in any situation to come up, you can't go weary. You can't get caught up in, in foolishness. Stand in the spirit. You know, I don't, I don't care what it is. Stand in the spirit. Because there's going to be something in this world to try to get you off from what you do. There's going to be something, somebody, some situation. You know, like I said, man, these people mean too much to me to be sad. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they planted seeds and, 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 and taught you things. And, you know, like I say, Mr. Riley, blind, happy all the time. Happy all the time. Shared his testimony with me, all, whatever he was going through. On, on our walks, he would share his testimony. But y'all know, Mr. Riley, what he wanted to do most of all is sing and lead a song. He wanted to lead a song. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he did. He, he didn't bag, he didn't bag, he didn't ask. He said, whenever that time come, I feel I want to lead a song. Yeah. Yeah. And just so much, so many things was going on that we could, we could never get it just quite. We, met, we, we, did, we tried a few times just seeing how it would be best. And we seen some signs. It showed up. But we never got, never had the time to really get back to it. But he wanted to uh, lead a song. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think when, when we say, you know, I'm blessed and, and you don't walk in that, it's mixed, it's, it's mixed emotions. People get mixed. If you was blessed at church and then you went home and your spirit changed, you know, <laughs> if you went somewhere and you got some bad news and your spirit changed, you know, because we live in this world and we know things are going to happen. And God is not going to let us know. He's not going to say, well, Philip, this is what's going to happen. I'm going uh, to take your wife and, and probably your daughter. And he ain't going to do that. Yeah, he's not going to do that. And he could, but he's not. So I think anything that he do, all that he do is good. You know what I'm saying? Whether we like it or not, it's all good. You know, it's just what we want. You know, it's just sometimes us being, you know, just being people. He said, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all especially, especially to those of the house of faith. Especially. Especially. You should be treated, you know, and, and, and walk right past people and can't even say hi. Can't even say hello, how you doing? I ain't got time. I ain't got time uh, to say hi. You know, people's worth more than that. So I'm saying, I'm saying we should be valuing people while they here. So then when they go, I can be glad. I can be excited that you went on. I don't have to be sitting up here thinking about, man, I just talk bad about him. Or I just, I just said something. Oh, man, I didn't even speak to him when he was here. So that's what goes through your mind. But I'm just saying, if, if we get to be in the Christians that God would have us be, we wouldn't be sad. Yeah. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. You're going to miss them. And I know it, it's a day that not, won't go by where you don't think about people that's gone. I know for me, you always think about them because they left something there. You know, but that's not bad. That's not bad. But as long as you're treating people the best that you can, even when they're not treating you well, even, even when they're not speaking to you, yeah, even when they don't have the time, but you take the time to come back and say, how are you doing? How are you doing? No, that's all God's. It ain't, it ain't big. It ain't much. But it's hard when you got pride and, 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 and thinking this person ain't worthy enough to and God is saying, what you're thinking about that person is what you having me think about you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, come on. Huh? 
But uh, I mean, I mean, you know, that's that's my my. I tell you the truth. I mean, I just don't. My my marriage is on God. My marriage is not Raquel, my wife, or Patrick. That's not it. It's God saying, "How do you treat my daughter?" She can and might not be worth the time of day, but God said, "You treat my daughter like a queen. You treat my daughter like a queen." I heard that. I heard that. And that's what I live on. I don't live on the other mess because I wouldn't be there. Yeah. I would still be doing what I, I was doing if I hadn't heard. You know? Yeah. So you treat every you treat you treat people good, God's gonna treat you good. Yeah. You treat people good that don't deserve I'm telling you, don't deserve it. Just try it. God will give you the, man, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you don't have to want for nothing, but you're going to feel like you've been stomped on all the time. You say, man, why, why did I hit that joke in the mind? I said, yeah. I would have been, but, but God shows you another way, and I love it from the ways that I handle things and done it. I love it. I love how arguments supposed to break out and how God just shows me. I love it. I love it. Yeah, he shows. And as well as my friends. My friends still, th I still love them. I still go by and see them and, and, and talk to them. And, you know, you say, man, they ain't worth no way you going. I still go just, just show them on. You know what I'm saying? They're going to put their weed down. They're going to push their drinks over. And I tell them all the time, hey, man, you ain't got to put nothing up. I can't be your house. Nah, I ain't playing with that. They, they scared of me. more scared of me than they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, man, I'm telling you, if you try the spirit by the spirit, things will work out. Because what I'm finna argue about or what I'm finna have a problem with ain't worth nothing anyway. It ain't worth nothing. Or wait on God to work it out. Yeah, you got a problem and you think, I got to get it. I got I to gotta let him know right now. You ain't got to let him know. God will show him. Yeah, he'll show him and he'll show you that he showed him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, it's too good to be, be sad. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all get there at some point. I think we all get there. But I don't think we even have to start. I don't even think we, you know, I mean, we, we've been taught that. You know, when you go to a funeral, you know. Now, you've been some places, I know y'all have been to some funerals, that just go crazy. They just, ain't a sad person in the house. Yeah, because they know who this person was. And they'll show you, you know, that's what, that's what they say when they say get up and, and, and speak up on a person. It, it is not sad. Tell what this guy means to you. And, and done, and you'll be laughing, and you'll be enjoying the stories and all that. This is what life. This is what life is. You know, and we all gotta go. We all gotta go. We're not gonna stay here. We're not staying here. Yeah. And well, you don't know if you're gonna bury your kid. You don't know if your kid gonna bury you. You don't know. Yeah. But I think we get so set up that this gotta happen. I gotta leave the house this morning. I'm gonna go to work. I'm going to take a lunch. I'm going to come back and finish my job. I'm going to come home. I'm going to do this, this, him. You got your plan. But that ain't got to happen. You know, that don't have to happen. You know, and then we pray. We ask God for these things, but then we still rely on self. You know. So I told you, I know I can't take care of my family. I know I, I got to go get the gun and I got somebody come to my house, huh? Can't take care of nobody. I done seen that picture. It ain't no good. You ain't fooling me. <laughs> you, it ain't like, it just ain't, it, it's not like that. It's not, it's, it's not that simple. But you won't know it until you got into it and done it. That's the thing. You, you won't know the repercussions of it. You don't know that it ain't just one day. This thing goes for years and years and you know, you have depression. You have all kinds of things. It's, 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 it's not that simple. 
So all I'm saying is I just trust in God. And whatever, whatever it be, I'm going to rejoice and be happy in it. Whatever I am, whatever I am, I'm not, I'm going to rejoice and be happy in it and give God the glory and, and move on. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I, and like I said, I, I tell Andrew, I hadn't had a problem with nobody since I've been here at Antioch. No dislike, no hate, no somebody you wouldn't want to see or somebody, I don't, I don't know if you talked about, I still haven't had no problem here from the old church to here. It's been good to me. But then let me tell you, I'm not looking for that. So you could have been throwing all kind of hits at me and blows and I, and I didn't get it. I'm, I, I'm not looking for drum. I'm not looking for that. You know, if you go looking for it, you'll find it. I'm not looking for it. You know, so what are you looking for? What do you want? You know, and I believe if you want it, you can have it. Because God owns every. If you want it, you can have it. If you want to do it, you can do it. It's that, it's that simple. But I got to believe that I'm worthy of it. See, a lot of times we don't believe we're worthy of it. We want it, but, you know, I don't know if I can keep this up. I might, I might not like it in a minute. Or, you know, my, my, you know I'll change. I want to do this now. But the next 10 minutes, my mind will change, you know. So I'm saying that's how we do. But, you know, whatever God does, I just believe that uh, need to be trusting him. You know, if you say you trust him, you know, because you're going to mess a whole lot of stuff up by not. Yeah. So then so then back to the kid thing, what God said, well, I got to take your son for a minute because I got to keep him alive. You can't. You know what I'm saying? I got. Yeah, I got to take. So I'm saying when, when God puts something in your hand. When he puts something in your hand, you are responsible for what he put in your hand. Yeah. You can't just stay, you just can't let it run over there or go over there. You got to be responsible for, for that child. You got to be responsible for that wife, for that husband. You got to be responsible. You can't just let it go. What if, you know, you got to be responsible. It's easy it's easier to let it go. But it's not the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you see it, you say, wow. And God was telling you all the time. See, this here looked much better, felt much better. This over here, I don't like. I don't like nothing about that. I said, trust me for it. Trust me for it. And then you got more than what you would have yeah, yeah. He's just good. So I'm just saying, whenever, whenever these times get and they get hard uh, on you, uh, try to find some reason to rejoice in that person. Try to find something good about that person, some where that person meant to you, instead of the sadness, because his life meant something. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's life meant something. So my, my head ain't going to stay down. It's going to come up. But if I can rejoice now, shoot, rejoice. But it's like something's wrong with it if I, look, if I don't look sad. Like, like I don't care. It's like I don't care if I'm not, if I'm not crying or if I'm, my head not down. I care. And I'm going to miss him just like you miss. It's going to be the same. But what that person meant, man, yeah, it meant more than that. I'm telling you, I, I know people all around that just... Saying Mr. Riley it, it, it had their own personal relationships with him in their time. They had their own personal relationship with him. That meant something. Yeah. I got people all around here that, that mean, stuff, mean something to me. Not because of what they've done. They ain't got to do nothing for me. You just mean something to me. You know, it's just, it's just there. Yeah. A whole church. All, and Because I'm not, I'm not expecting nothing. You, if you're in a bad mood, that's cool, too. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's cool, too. If you don't feel like hugging or shaking a hand, that's all right. I, I mean, I'll see you next Sunday. You might shake my hand. Or something. That's all right. I don't have to get hurt because you didn't want to, you know, hug me or, or shake my hand. I bet you I'll be back next week shaking your hand again. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. 
Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. He talked to you. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Always here. Always here. Yeah, you say that, and, and, and I know with James, you know, say James don't, James talk. It's just if you talk to James, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna just keep it, but James talk. Yeah, and I thought for years that he just don't talk. James will talk. So, so you'll find a whole lot of stuff out about people just shaking their head, just, just saying good morning. But understand, everybody's life at that time may not be in that, they may not be in that mood. They ain't, ain't nothing against you. It's just something they're going through. So I'm going to come back next week and see if things better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not mad. It doesn't move. It doesn't bother me. I, I understand. I understand people be in places at times and, and they just there. But, but I can't be mad at you because something is going on in your life. What am I mad for? Yeah. What am I going to charge you for because you didn't want to shake hands or didn't want to hug? Just come back next time. Yeah. Just come back next time. Yeah. But I, I'm just saying, man, it's just good to, to show how God's been good to you. And you do that, you do that when, you, you know, God's been good. So I need to, you need to let people know God is good. You know, I, I don't need to have my face all puffed out and yeah, I'm, I'm going to have some wrinkles anyway just from laughing all the time. I, I laugh. I tell you, I laugh all the time. You ain't going to change my day. I don't care what. You're not going to change my day. Yeah. yeah I laugh all the time. My, my, my mother used to tell me, boy, you're going to have stretch marks on your face right here because you laugh all the time. As a kid, just laughing all the time. Yeah. So I just just saying as a church, you know, they need, you know, if I'm going through a crisis, I really don't need you to go through a crisis with me. You know what I'm saying? That's what, if, if I'm going through a hard time, I need you to come crack some jokes. I need you to come talk about something else to get me out. I don't need you to come where I'm at and I'm sitting over here crying and you come sitting next to me crying. Man, get away from me. <laughs> Man, get away. I, I, you know what I'm saying? That's what, I need you to lift me, lift, lift me up, man. Come over here, we both crying. Nobody got nowhere. Man, I wasn't supposed to be up here tonight. Andrew was, but I, I didn't know what was happening there. <laughs> Did you have anything that you wanted before we go to? I'm. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Dawson. He does what I ask them to do. <laughs> that if we're not in here, just carry on like we're here. So I appreciate that, Reverend Dawson. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I just wanted to do a check in, check everybody's pulse. How y'all, how y'all doing? Good. I know it's a lot going on. I know it's a lot pressing us. I know it's like one thing after the other. I just want to make sure we're breathing. <laughs> that we're taking time to breathe. That we're taking time to check on one another. That we're taking time to love on one another. That we are not deceived by people looking okay or because they have a smile on their face. These are difficult times. And so um, I just wanted to ask that we uh, check on one another. Somebody sent me a text today and they said, hey, sis, I'm just checking on you. And that meant so much because I mean, sometimes it becomes so overwhelming, you know, work, family, um, siblings. You know, I don't know, some may be taking care of parents, some may be taking care of children. We are all at different places in life. And then you turn on the TV and you hear about another thing and another thing and another thing and another thing. And um, so we just need to check on one another because even though we're Christians and even though we love God, still life happens. So as the family of believers, um, I hope that we're not getting weary. That's a good topic, Reverend Dawson, that we're not getting weary. I hope that we're praying for one another Hope that we are lifting each other up and not tearing each other down because we need each other to survive this stuff. We need each other. Um, We are working on the arrangements for Reverend Wright. Um, We um, are looking at a date next week. And so as soon as we have the dates confirmed, we'll make sure that we let you know. But we want to continue to lift up those families who are bereaving. Um, We know that the uh, Potters and Wright family, they're all of our family. We all are family together, but, um, you know, we grieve and mourn with them. But, you know, the good thing is um, that as a church body, we can celebrate and mourn together, right? We know that Christmas time is a joyous and festive time, and that's a great thing, but sometimes it's difficult for people. And so, especially, you know, those firsts and, and those um, different things. And hey, even if it's been 20 years since your mama yeah. has been gone, sometimes it hurts like yesterday. So, again, let's check on each other, call, send texts. You know, sometimes we know that we hope that we're praying for each other. But sometimes it's good just to say, like Reverend Dawson said, when you're shaking somebody's hand or when you're hugging them, you say, you know what? I'm praying for you. I love you Um, because you never know when it's your last time. So um, that's all I have to say. Um, Let's get ready for auxiliary meetings. I believe the women, are they meeting in here, Jackie? Jackie? Jackie, are they meeting in here? The women meeting in here? Okay. All right. And the men are meeting in there? Okay. Thank you.